What's up, dudes? Today we're gonna. <laughs> we're back in the '90s, early 2000s. Sarah's a surfer, uh, dude. Now, <laughs> a dude that one might even say. Bill and Ted, so she's feeling very, very dude surfer, dude. Um, so dudes and dudettes, we are playing things from the flood. Um, everyone is caught up to speed since we last played. Um, but I will let you guys know the key points of uh, last session, just so you you kind of know where we're at. So, they, our intrepid team, explored Principal Yarnick's office, found mystery vials, proceeded to charm Birgit, the innocent photographer, into helping them helping them with their schemes um they now have a solution of said mystery chemical in those vials on birdie's person burgett revealed that she has some sort of uh new body affliction 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 is the probably the burgett best has the weird body of this campaign <sighs> somebody gotta have a weird body <laughs> It's always me playing that character, no? <laughs> um, Birgit has a weird body. Um, and uh, Louise Tenenbaum is supposedly helping the teens combat this uh, affliction conspiracy. So our troop of kids and investigators have traveled over to Louise's house in Adelso, I believe, and they saw this magnificent, structurally very unusual building um, where it was skinny on the first floor and then much bigger and octagonal on the second floor, wheelchair ramps leading up to it, stone gate, uh, stone wall and a steel gate. And just as they're about to hop that gate, they get um, surprised by a tinted black van and two agents in suits pop out and say, hey, you kids, what are you doing? And you look over and you can see that they had like night vision goggles and, you know, like stealth sonar you know, cones or whatever, <laughs> listening <laughs> devices. <laughs> um, and they have blocked in Rudy, so Rudy can't, you know, go forward anymore. Rudy's turn radius is much tighter <laughs> than this van. Uh, Burr gets in the sidecar because y'all exile. Oh, the sidecar does bar. reduce our turning radius. Um, and so that you see these two agents march out wearing their sunglasses at night and their earpieces in um and they they go hey you kids what are you doing here and they're going to reach for burgett and whoever's closest who's on the back of the of uh, rudy who's the last person on rudy probably me person. probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they grab they go for birdie and burgett Unless you decide to react. We'll pull them into Van first. I will go willingly. Okay. Great. Birgit's like, ah, ah! <laughs> just is stressing out. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. She gets pulled in. You get pulled in. I want to fall on the ground before I get there and then like reach a hand up for this guy to help me up before I get into the van. Okay. He he goes to like help you up. Perfect. When he grabs my hand, the vial I have hidden in my hand, I slap his hand and it breaks a vial between our hands. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're both bloody and have wounds filled with glass. <laughs> okay, nothing nothing happens. I say. Except for the guy going, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> That was that chemical that you made. I know she's on to you. Now you have the ugly too. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he like hustles you in and will turn to like grab you too. And he's bleeding all the while. 
you think Lucas is like whispering to Mick and it's like, Mick, what do we do? What do we do, Mick? Mick, what and he's like grinding his hands, like twisting them around the handle of his hockey stick. And he's like, Mick, tell me what to do because I'm going to start swinging in about two seconds. <laughs> Lucas, you distract them. I got this. Distract? How? <laughs> You said you're about to start swinging, and that sounds funny. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Lucas jumps off of uh, the <laughs> jumps off the bike, and it's uh, like oh gosh, <laughs> I think he thinks they look like American, like FBI agents for what, like from a TV show or a movie, and so he's like. Go long, you American f wads <laughs> And he like takes he. I'm assuming this is like a rocky, gravelly path. Uh, and so he like just gets one of the uh, bigger rocks that he can see, and immediately punts it right into like the windshield of the car to break it. it. Great. What is your intent? My intent is to break the windshield, hmm. and then keep peppering the car with rocks to just rendering it immobile uh, yeah are you trying to remember render it immobile yeah. so they can't I mean, drive away have trouble driving away with everyone if every window is broken in and like i'm okay. evading them and also hitting their shins with rocks i think he's not going for the face but he's okay. got pretty good are aim. you trying you're just kind of trying to like keep them from I'm like, distracting them. Yeah, immediately going. Okay, okay, and then while that's happening, okay, I'm You're gonna roll force for that, Sean. <laughs> of course, they parked their van in front of, like, in the front of Rudy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, one hundred percent. So I'm going to rev Rudy's engine big time and sh- like <laughs> drive towards this van, jump off, roll, <laughs> pull like a wrench or a screwdriver out of my tool bag and stab the tire. Ooh. <laughs> trapped in this nice. abandoned building with you. You're trapped in this abandoned okay. building with us. I'm, I'm going to say that this is going to be like extended trouble. Like, Ooh. Is, like you guys are going to have to tag Perfect. team. Love it. And How much? Get a, I... And both get a six. Like we need. How many? How many successes? Too bad I got five. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say six. So great. Okay, six is good. Um, I was gonna roll move. Yeah, you should do that. Okay. Can I add Ruby? <laughs> yes. I wish I could do that in Burning Wheel. But it is a lot more dice that I'm rolling. We are dream team. (laughs) This is plan A fifty nine er B six that we can catch (laughs) things in second grade. (laughs) Abduction by strange men. (laughs) (laughs) A well oiled machine. No time. Um. Okay. Great. So you <laughs> all succeed with flying colors. Uh, all the windows are shattered. The tire is slashed. <laughs> <laughs> they are kept busy by just being like pebble, like pelted with these hockey sized hockey puck sized rocks um, and so Birgit is still in the car and Birdie is and so I would say the you guys have succeeded in immobilizing the van and keeping the agents from like being in the van and also from like advancing on you too like they're, they're kind of just fending things off right now so if you wanted to do anything else Birdie in the van now that I'm in the van alone, can I investigate and see what they have going on in here? Yeah, of course. How are you going to do that? You're just going to poke around? Just deal with yeah, their cool sonar around. guns. Okay. Sweet. One success. 
you can see that they have been on a long stakeout. And you've noticed, funnily enough, they look like they should be with the Agency for Disease Control, but everything in the van is craft decor brand. It's all a ruse. Okay. You're like, this, this night vision goggle, craft core, this <laughs> long range distance hearing cone, craft core. Can I ask a question? Sure. You sort of gave me one, so I'll just ask one, but what is hidden here and where is it? Okay. It's the rocks. It's not the rocks. What is hidden is you see that the ID badge of one of the guys, and it says Agent 443 on it, and on it is Alex's face. Alex says in Mick Alex? Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <Is> that... <laughs> Just to be clear, Alex is not one of the two men accosting us. He is. He's got sunglasses and um... <laughs> or someone who looks like him. What is it? The one that I shattered the vial into? Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he's magnetic already, so this is just too much. Oh, okay, yeah. At least he's a robot. Maybe he's immune. Well, that is interesting. <laughs> and an unexpected development. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You can see the other agent's badge is also there, and it's 319. Whose face is that? My dad's? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. Could be. Can I? Are there keys in this van? Roll a d6. <laughs> no. I was going to say it locks the doors, but it seems like all the windows are open. <laughs> all the windows are open. Seems like, uh... Including the windows that aren't supposed to ever open. Is there a back door? Like, is there a door that is not the door we were put in? Uh, yeah, there's, sure. There's definitely a back door. Okay. I mean, it's a van. Like a, it's got to have doors side. on both sides. Yeah. Okay. I'll say, okay, Berge, you have two options. <laughs> Berge, you have three options, and one of them is a necessity calm down. Okay. Oh, I... Slap her. Get it together. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm fine. They're not gonna take me to Ekaro. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. What? What is no, it? They're not gonna take you where? <laughs> the quarantine I island. The, the quarantine camp on oh. Ekaro. Oh, on Ekaro. Okay. Yes. Well, so the options are: we can run out that door and get to the black hole. Mm-hmm. Louise or, Tenenbaum's house. Yeah, which is, no, we probably would go somewhere else and then come back because it's right there and we don't want them to see us. Um, or, I infected that agent with what the ugly and we can try and convince him that he's going to get the ugly unless he does what he knows is going to cure it and then he also has to do that on you. Okay. No, you have to pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Birgit 100% chooses running away unless you pressure her because she'll do something for you like oh, she'll Birgit, now that I think about it I'm also infected with the ugly so it's really a team effort here <laughs> but you okay. have the ugly experience mm -hmm. so yeah. I'll Trust your I mean, judgment it's not against that my bad, judgment. and she says it's not that bad. And as she says that, like more, you just see like a wash of shimmering, changing, happening all over, like over from where it was on her arm. It's just to like spread more over her body. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, one last thing before we run. What? When people go to the black hole, do they come back from the black hole? Do they get better? How do you know that they get better? I mean, at least it's not craft decor. I don't know if they get better, but I mean, it's, it's, Louise is on our side, and I don't know. I don't okay. know. I'll grab I think, her face with my yeah, bloody Lucas hand. Is like, I'll be like, well, Berger, hurry up, party Of our fugitive life. <laughs> Say goodbye to everything you ever loved, and let's go. And then we're going to sneak out the back. Okay. Meanwhile, I will say that one of uh, one of Lucas's rocks has knocked off Alex's glasses, and you can see, or Agent Four Four Three, who looks like Alex, Alex's glasses. Um, People don't just casually look like Alex. (laughs) What? People don't just casually look like Alex, unless there's a magnetic Alex running around, which is why normal (laughs) Alex. Doesn't have things sticking there. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's two different Alexes. At it's least. an Alex. Yeah, it's just for all intents and purposes, from what you can tell, it looks just like Alex. It doesn't have Alex's name on it. It just has Alex's no. face. Okay. It just has like a picture of him. Oh, I'm taking that by the way. Four, four, three. Okay. And then like craft decor. <laughs> um. And so Alex is going to continue. Alex Bot or whoever you want to think about, Agent Alex, um, is going to continue to try to apprehend you. He shows no signs of recognition. Agent 319 is also going to attempt to apprehend you. um, And you will, they will not be able to drive the car away, but they'll like continue to like keep on. I pull out my smack and wrench. I'm like, if you come close to me, I will hit you! I love the smack and wrench. It's solely for smacking. (laughs) Being objects or people. (laughs) Never for wrench purposes. Only for smacking purposes. And then if Birdie and Birgit are exiting the vehicle, I think Mm -hmm. I will try. If they're going towards the house, I'm going to try to get towards the house too. We should distract them so we can get there unseen. Okay. How are we going to get there unseen? You seem to be doing a good job of resisting arrest. (laughs) Yeah, well. We can't do it forever. I think you can. (laughs) You see Agent 319 reaches to his uh, radio. Oh my god. I (laughs) hocked that right out of there. (laughs) No, Breath do not. The <laughs> uh, if you want to, if you want to get the radio before he calls for it, you'll have to roll. I'll roll. What? What, Logan? That was a lot of fingers. Yeah, I was gonna say. Do I know if there was like a like a signal receiver and broadcaster in the van that I could break? But Bernie knows nothing about tech, so she would not know that. Okay, great. Yeah. I'll try and roll for that. Honestly, at this point, I'm probably going to try and have to try and knock him out or something. Nice. Two! Can I... What's your extra? Okay. Um, I think knock them out. Okay. Is... <laughs> oh, that is. Your opponent is knocked unconscious. Nice. Yeah, I definitely do that. Okay. Okay. So, so the uh, whoever that Alex was, 319 yeah. is I think I, like, out. hit the radio, and then the radio, like, flunks into his head and he just like falls to the ground and then i just hold my hockey stick up like a mace and i'm like you want to get with this again (laughs) did you see what just happened to your buddy you better take it yourself pick him up and leave home wherever are we home i don't know (laughs) go (laughs) get Um, get. (laughs) go on and get that's what my brother said to say, say to bears Get. <laughs> get. You get out of here now, you hear? Um, Agent 443 slash maybe Alex uh, does not show any signs of like emotion or like w- worry and continues to try and apprehend you. 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna oh. try to knock yeah. him out. Okay. What's your force? <laughs> she needs some therapy rage. What happens if your smacking wrench gets stuck to him? It probably it's will, but just it'll be giving fine. Give him a weapon. I have a plan. She's got a plan. Listen to this plan. Uh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <sighs> what was your intent? To knock him out. Okay. So I guess he had turned to look at Lucas. Um and he turns to look at Lucas and I just run toward him with this rattling. Like, ah! <laughs> Great. And you knock him, you knock him out. And as he like turns, like you hit him and he kind of like spin he like rolls as he falls the lights of rudy's headlights hit his face and you can see his eyes glint silver and then he crumples to the ground and passes out alex's eyes are not normally silver keep hitting Uh, that's what i was thinking (laughs) (laughs) i think uh Lucas jogs over. To his head when she hits. Does the no. Smack okay. one more time for good measure. Okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> nothing happens. But he is bleeding from Make, the. Vial. We're not trying to kill them. Why yeah. not? They're bad people. Because then we'd be murderers. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't actually try to hurt us yet, I guess. Though I think that could be counted as kidnapping, since we are not adults yet. Yeah, it's illegal, which is as bad as murder. Anyways, I say, throw him in the van, set a brick on the gas, and let him go. That fucking van is not going anywhere. (laughs) You only slashed one tire, right? Yeah. They'll make it. Maybe. It's gonna veer in a curve. (laughs) It's not our problem. We need them not here. Yeah. I don't know. You're good with cars and stuff. I thought you could make it work. I can't make it work, Lucas. Just watch me. (laughs) Okay. Birdie, what are you doing while they're arguing over unconscious agents? Oh, Birdie and I are sneaking up to that house. Okay. You roll in sneak? Is there anyone to sneak from? I mean, Louise may be a ghost. She may not be a ghost. Why Why would she be a ghost? (laughs) Sean Sean said that last session. Sean didn't believe Louise existed. (laughs) Okay. Well, sure, I'll roll sneak, but on one condition. You don't have have... to. You don't have to. It was just a question. Is there a benefit? If there's yes, someone there to is. hide from, you have to roll sneak. You find you something, can unexpected. Find something unexpected. I will do that then. Um, okay. But I want to. I have a plus two to Birgit, and she will is willing to take risks to help me. And so <laughs> by sneaking, I want her to take a risk, and I want to use my plus two bonus. Okay, to do for for the sneak. Yeah. For to for to sneak. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what is your intent? Like, how is the sneak playing out? Are you like separating? Are you you know, are you going to send Birgit to the front door and you're going to sneak somewhere else? Or what's what's the what's the plan? Oh, it's like uh, how tall or how high off the ground is the second story? Or like the, uh, the like story is norm- <laughs> a normal like what is it? 10 feet, 10, 12 feet? or something. OK, Birgit and I are going to knock out of the front door. Are there windows on the second floor? Um, hold on, let me look at the picture. There, okay. Uh, there are windows, but they are like 20 feet up. Like, you're not gonna let me let me show you your picture again. Let me see. Let me see if I can refresh everyone's. Oh, yeah, it's a weird house. That's not 20 feet. Yeah, what is it count, in meters? If you count that extra spot. At least 15. Yeah, How does she least. have street lights on her house? I don't know. You'll have to meet her and find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I guess, yeah, we're just gonna I'm gonna encourage Birgit and be like, Birgit, pretend like you're in 
an American spy movie, and then I'm gonna start singing like a, I don't know, James Bond theme. I'm gonna hum it, and we're gonna like roll across the ground and sneak all the way there. Great. Uh, <laughs> the front door. As you talk to Birgit, you notice that one arm is much longer than the other. I'm going to for <laughs> both of our sanities, not mention it. <laughs> Perfect. <Aww. laughs> <laughs> Bergen's like, okay, okay, I can do this. <sighs> mm-hmm. Sneak, sneak, sneaks. <laughs> you gotta roll. <laughs> do I... Thought you were gonna hum the James Bond theme. One success. Oh, and you put the bonus in. Okay, great. Did I re-roll that? Oh, <laughs> no, probably not. That's it. Okay. Great. You succeed. You've snuck successfully, You've no less. Snuck. Remind me where we were sneaking to. I got too excited about Birkin's <laughs> arm. <laughs> it's a lot I have to keep track of. There's not a door that's not the front door that we can see. Uh, there is a door to the basement, like garage. So you can see with the first story. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Um, d- we'll go up the stairs. I remember there being stairs. Okay. You'll go up the stairs into the second floor. Mm-hmm. You'll see that it's a, like, that's her living room, dining room. That's the octagonal weirdly larger than the the first floor mm-hmm. space and you see a lady sitting down it looks like from where you're at just smoking a cigar in a power suit staring out at her window because her window faces the lake you know the front was where you guys were uh, uh-huh. land and then the lake is right behind it so she's like staring out at the lake her door's just so- open <laughs> smoking a cigar there's no doors on this it's just like one big open floor she doesn't have an outside door oh an outside door to the second floor (laughs) yeah yeah she has locks i thought oh sorry i thought the sneak was like getting into the house oh yeah it was (laughs) (laughs) i'll let you get into the house you're in the house oh my gosh okay I'll, you'll use it to get into the house, plus Birgit, you know, arm. Like, mm-hmm. Extra points. Uh, so you're in, I'll say you're in, and you're on the second floor. Okay. Are you Miss Tenenbaum? She snaps her head around because she didn't hear any of this. <laughs> she's listening. You. She's got like a record player that's just been playing like 80s power music this whole time. <laughs> 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 wrong and decade she, lady she's got the cigar uh, she goes who's asking I'm she's asking. also 25 I'm sorry is her name Dahlia <laughs> her, name, her name is Louise I'm asking I've heard that you can help people like my friend here she takes a long drag of her Cuban cigar <laughs> She's like, I don't, how do I know you don't have a wire on you? Because she's in fact, these agents have been watching me for days. Yeah, and you clearly have not been watching them because my friends currently beat them up outside. (laughs) She's like, there wasn't much I can do to help you. She like looks down at her wheelchair and like starts wheeling forward, and one wheel on her wheelchair is squeaking, so it's just like. <laughs> okay, there's some questionable health choices you're making. One is smoking, <laughs> who's living in a two story house in a wheelchair with stairs. It's all wheelchair accessible, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so you are going to have to. I want to empathize with her. Do something to, yeah, to, to earn her trust. I guess. Can I empathize with her and then charm her? 
Sure. Like, I, I, I want to empathize with her just to, like, see what she is. Sure. Like, yeah. analyze her. But then I guess to actually convince her to help would be a charm. Yeah. I'll say if you get extra successes, you can choose to put those towards, like, it'll be a setup action. You know, you can okay. kind of yeah. get a bonus. Okay. So I'll empathize. Uh-oh. I will. Nope. I'm going to re-roll that. Okay. And I'm what? currently injured because I have glass shards in my hand. True. Good job. Great. Okay, so I guess, I mean, tech- that's like a net neutral because now I have a condition on this next roll and one bonus on this next roll. <laughs> it's great. But you get information. Oh. Yeah, I get to ask two questions. Um, mm-hmm. What does she want? <laughs> is she illegal? <laughs> is she illegal? Currently, yes. You look, you open up your third eye and your heart chakra, and you reach your little psychic feelers out through the Cuban cigar smoke. And. <laughs> Excellent medium. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel that Louise Tenenbaum is made of revenge. She is just like a seething, righteous, revenge wheelchair lady. Um, you can see that she just wants to like set things right. Okay, and then I want to know, okay, I want to then ask, what is her weak spot? Specifically, Mm -hmm. what has she been wronged? Like, what does she really want vengeance against in this moment? She really wants vengeance against Craftacor. Okay, yeah. You can tell that her mom, she lost her mom, and that Crafticore was probably the reason for that. Or she believed, you know, like in her mind, Crafticore is like the reason that her mom is no longer there. So you, she is dead set against Crafticore and anything associated with it. Well, then when I try to charm her, I will I will say, what did she ask me? What she's like, how do I know you're wearing a wire? Yeah. Yeah. She's gonna assume that you're like agents yeah. trying to like from craft a core trying to like senior old agents. Catch her. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then I'll say I guess. I don't know. I can't prove I'm not wearing a wire. What a strange request. I just we're trying to find Louise. It's our last You help. could strip. I am Louise, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> She's just... Well Louise. We came here because we need your help, not because we want to red on you to craft a core. You're our last hope. You've already lost. I've already lost my mom to craft a core. I don't want to lose my best friend, too. And I'll point at Birgit. <laughs> Birgit's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> she, the like, manipulation. Wipes a, she wipes a little tear, and then she's like, oh! She gets freaked. She doesn't realize her arm grew. And she, so she, she has a Poked herself moment. in the eye, because yeah. she's not used to the leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, are you charming? I'm charming. Do I have a bonus because of my my empathize? Yeah. Thank you, great. <laughs> you can do Good it. Luck. I would like to do one more thing. I want to <laughs> add to this. I want to okay. say I've already lost my mom to craft a core. I don't want to lose my best friend. But I want to say I've already lost my mom to craft a core. 
I've already lost my friend Jonas to Crap Decor. I don't want to lose my best friend to Crap Decor. And then I want to use my bonus from investigating Jonas's room and knowing that the black <laughs> hole is at Louis Tenenbaum's house. <laughs> okay, you can do that. That's good. I'll allow crafty, it. Crafty, crafty. Oh. <gasps> Reroll that one. <laughs> Okay, what are you checking? I am now scared because I have accidentally purposefully infected myself with something that <laughs> Burgett has led him to leave, me to leave was totally benign, but it's clearly a disfiguring <laughs> affliction that I now have, probably. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, so you succeed with Louise. You are now scared. as. You feel that fear. You look down and the site where you were infected starts to shimmer and change. And you now have a, I'll say, a little bracelet of this the new growth. Let's go ahead and put a sapphire in my hand for purity and good luck. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you, instead of a band aid, you just like stick a sapphire like where you cut yourself. Okay, great. That like doesn't a sharp glass out and put more crystals <laughs> into the glass filled wound. <laughs> um, great. Yes. So you now definitely have stage one the ugliness. Um, <laughs> Um, great. Okay, so Louise takes a look at you and she's like, well, nobody infected, no two people infected with the ugliness would work with Crafticore. That would just be suicide. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out and, and listen to you. I, I may think know we've told you everything that we know. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, you said you had friends outside. They are. They're not. <laughs> just like still arguing over a van. <laughs> yeah, one of them's doing something to the van, and the other. But let me just. I'll just tell you that he's not very. Um, he gets anxious sometimes, and if we're gonna be doing some things that might not be totally kosher, he's not Jewish by any means, but like he might not be one to be on board. So, also, I really don't want this getting any further. So we could just speak this alone. They're fine out there. Okay, great. Well, she's basically well. She's like, I can take you to the black hole. I can also ask answer a few questions you might have if you are willing to listen and then we'll yeah. switch to abby <laughs> okay sarah yeah wow, this is happening i would like to rig this <laughs> <laughs> i thought you said wow this is happening <laughs> no while this is happening i wow. want to hot wire the van and rig it to drive for like 30 seconds and then blow up <laughs> okay with them in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Great. Lucas sure. will not let that happen. You don't know what I'm doing. Which is why I left Lucas outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say rigging something to blow up is like you're gonna need at least two successes. Like okay. you're gonna okay. need okay. a higher okay. level of successes. So like sure. I'm gonna say hot wiring the van, one mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Rigging it to drive for thirty seconds, one success. Mm -hmm. Rigging it to blow up, three successes. Like we're okay. going burning wheel level of of difficulties here. Do I have to choose, so, or can I just try can, for all of them? You can try for all of them, but that's gonna be the that's the order. Okay, the delineation. Perfect. I don't think I can get three successes, but we'll see. Well, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Lucas, you're gonna need to get these grown ass men in a van. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I can lift them there. into a van easy. Okay. 
I think I'm asking Mick what she's doing. Like, what is the plan that we've agreed on? Lucas, you told me to make it so it drew away, and that's what I'm doing. Ignore the dynamite. <laughs> Ignore what I'm doing in the hood of this car. Just look at the brick I've put on the gas <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hmm. 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 I mean, yeah, he he trusts you, so sure. I mean, he puts them in the front seat of the car. <laughs> and he says, oh, "Okay, oh, so oh, you oh, just oh, gonna, oh, we can drive for a long time, right? We yeah. should be fine." And like, just yeah, it's going that way. Eventually, I mean, the road's not straight, so it'll, like, drive off into Yeah, they'll just go into a field, and, fine. yeah, it'll be fine. They'll survive that. Yep. Probably. Maybe not, but pff, that's not our responsibility. <laughs> I mean, I they didn't die. <laughs> but if we didn't explicitly cause it, then I will feel morally better. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly. like a trolley problem, but you put them you on the You want it to be manslaughter and not murder. Yeah, it can't be first degree murder or whatever. Okay. All right. We tried to do first degree kidnapping, so. Exactly. Yes, death penalty. We are the justice <laughs> system. <laughs> dog eat dog here in uh, Sweden. Um, Cool. Well, you get to do all of those things, Mickey. Rolled for it. So perfect. I'm gonna set it on its way, and then I'm gonna be like, "All right, Lucas, let's go into this house and see what the black hole is." You know. Gonna... Okay. Go into the house. About thirty seconds later, we hear a boom, <laughs> <laughs> and Lucas goes, "What was that?" Maybe it hit a tree. I don't know. There's a flare of light and the oh. intense smell of burning. That's not good. <laughs> like, what did you do? Ash rains down from the heavens. <laughs> you opened a volcano! It's it from the sky. Oh my gosh. That's not... That's, that's more than just a, hitting a tree. There weren't, there aren't, well, were there trees? I don't know. Who knows? If Probably. a car hits there a tree, Lucas, trees. the engine can blow up. That's what happens. Hit a tree. What? Explode. <laughs> hit a tree. I can't, they, what? how big of an explosion? pretty big it's an engine and then the engine lights on fire and then the gasoline lights on fire and then the whole car goes it's so easy <laughs> trees are now it burning like... you smell wood smoke there is now a fire see now the trees are on fire um okay lucas starts to have a meltdown over the fact that they probably just killed two people he immediately is like Big. <laughs> How? A big explosion? A really big explosion? I mean, not like a not like a nuclear bomb explosion, just like a little explosion. <laughs> kind of <laughs> big for like explosion. A little back. explosion where two people who are f less than five feet away from the source will survive? No. <laughs> Grabs her and is like crushing her hand and is like, So you're telling me we just killed two people with an explosion? We don't know that. He the just like. is now lit up by fire of trees. <laughs> and <what's... laughs> because it's like, That is not caused by a little explosion. <laughs> I said big to you, but little to the grand scheme of things. He just huddles in the corner and starts. We have to go up himself. the stairs. I'm gonna push you up the stairs. I don't know if you can push. I him. probably can't, but I'm gonna try. I'm a big boy. Birdie, what do you do when you hear explosion and see trees on fire from the windows that are 360 degrees of this second floor? 
Yeah, it definitely we should do. We should continue without those two. I don't think they're going to be productive. <laughs> Uh, yeah okay do abby and uh sean do you have any do do you feel trying to push lucas up birdie birdie i know you're there no lucas is just like catatonic you're gonna have to charm or lead him to get him to do anything Um, oh my god louise is just like night just gets more and more interesting. <laughs> oh god. Lucas, go up these stairs. God He's damn like, you. Oh my god, we killed them. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We killed them. Um I'm exhausted. It's the one where you have to Oh okay. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> you lead him. You're like birdies in here, birdie. <laughs> Go get to birdie. okay, birdies. Birdies so- upstairs. We don't know that they're dead. There's just a lot of fire. But if we stay on these stairs, then we're not gonna get to the black hole, and the police are gonna come, and the fire department's gonna come, and then we might be accused of doing something bad, which we definitely didn't do. We definitely didn't. There's just your scooter that's registered in your name. Cosmic <laughs> fire causes it. That's all. The cosmic explosion. <laughs> um, okay. Lucas is like, okay, we well, yeah, we need to find Birdie at least. And, and Birgit. Oh my yeah, god. Okay, Let's at least go. we'll make it to the black hole. Yeah. Black hole. Here we come. Woo-hoo! They drag him up the stairs. His heels just go. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so you guys go up the stairs you see uh Birgit with her longer than before arm and birdie and uh and louise in all her power suit glory with her cigar um and so sh- yes i want to be wearing an oversized knitted hand knitted sweater hmm. and i right. want to pull my hand inside of the sleeve so they can't see it Okay, great. Um, so Louise is just calmly uh, smoking, and she says, "Looks like you guys are gonna need to get out of town fast." <laughs> I love out of town. I have to go to school. <laughs> She's like, "Come with me. I'll take you to the black hole, and we'll till the fire burns down." <laughs> She just wheels over and you see that part of uh, the floor is actually like a service elevator, like a platform service elevator. And she's like, come on, I'll take you to somewhere safe. I'll I'll explain on the way. Do you have a a stone that cleanses the soul of mortal sins? (laughs) 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 Because I think I just helped commit two of them. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with or the that same later. one twice. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but fuck it. <laughs> so we'll deal with that later. Birgit is standing next to, like, Birgit has followed Louise. She is. How much bigger is her arm? <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say on the ground, but it is like half. It's like one half longer. Like, for That's another four hour long. long. <laughs> okay, so incredibly noticeable. Incredibly noticeable. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 Berg, Berget, how are you feeling? It's fine. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you some malachite and be like, "This will hold you over until you can get over it." <laughs> <laughs> Repent. <laughs> So you can... Louise is like, are you oh. guys going to be pussyfooting all night? Oh. No guarantees from some of but <laughs> I'm already on the elevator. I'm yeah, standing I'm there. on the oh. elevator opposite of Birgit. Okay. What? All I do is pussyfoot, like meatball, right? <laughs> sure, whatever you want to think, kid. <laughs> she, you know, pulls the service elevator and you just platform down and you realize you're going 
into that, you know, you're going down to the first floor and then down into the basement. And as uh, you get into the basement, you realize that she has uh, a secret jetty that leads onto the lake and a power boat. Um, and presumably this boat is going to take you to the black hole. So she reaches over, grabs a rifle, hands it to... Who does she think is the most capable of holding a rifle? <laughs> Birdie. Birdie charmed her, so she Birdie gets the rifle. Um, and she's like, keep your eye out for anybody who follows us. And then she points to Mick and she's like, you, operate the boat. I'll tell you where you need to go. Yes, ma'am. And so she <laughs> wheels her way on. Do you want and... me to push you, ma'am? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> She's like, ma'am? <laughs> She's 24. She's not ma'am. <laughs> Miss? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> and she wheels faster and goes <laughs> to the boat. I'm gonna go um, up to uh, to I'm gonna go up to Lucas. I'm gonna say, uh, how's that malachite working out? You feeling you feeling uh tent with mortal suit? No. Okay, no. Good. Well, I hand you a second piece in the gun. I say you might need to commit some more. <laughs> I'm trying to decide. I think Lucas might have actually been hunting before. Probably. Because yeah. I think he's closest We're to the outskirts of town. She has never been hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he liked it, and I don't think he was necessarily good at it. But I do think he has been before it, though. Um, Lucas takes it and, like, I, I, I don't want this. She gave it to you. Yeah. She's scared. She, she, she's a chronic smoker. She doesn't make good choices. <laughs> This is the 90s. Everyone's a chronic smoker. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been hunting, you can do this better than I can. I have to I have to control. I have to keep Burgett calm. And I have to keep that lady from who knows what she's going to do. Also, what did you do with that vial? I saw you fall and then you're talking about infecting it or something? No, I think you misheard when you were hitting stones at people. No, I think you did that first. Yeah, I know. I fell, and then you started hitting stones at people. Anyway, let's go. They're leaving. Okay. All aboard! <laughs> Start that, that power engine. Um, and you're just driving blind, you know, Louise is smoking a new cigar. She's got her boating cigar and her home cigar. <laughs> a bandolier just stuffed full of cigars. <laughs> yeah, so it's all dark except for the light of uh, Louise's cigar that lights her ominously. Um, and so she's, she looks at you guys and she says, oh. so it looks like you guys got on the wrong side of craft core. Uh, I don't want to throw anyone under the boat, but Burgett sort of started this with the ugly. And is there a right side of Crafticore anyway? She's like, the ugly. Such a cute name for such a scientific disease. She's like, you don't have, I mean, you do have the ugly. And she looks over at uh, Burgett, who just kind of gives a little cry. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what you have is uh, GMM. That's Craft Decor level experiment. They started in the 80s. Mm, ah, yes. GMM. Mm. Yes. You want to... Genetically modified monster. <laughs> is that close. it? It's close. Hold on. Let me find out what the real name is. They're just using the acronym. I forgot. <laughs> Da, 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 da. GMM gene micro manipulation. Oh, yeah. 
Of yeah. course, Jean. Of Jean's manipulation. It's happening to you. A Birgit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she means you as a group, but uh, yeah, specifically Birgit. And what, um, is, what is Birgit being modified microgenetically into? <laughs> Oh, she, she's like, oh, I, I couldn't tell you that. I just know that in the 80s, Rick Synergy or The Loop started researching uh, researching some highly unethical experiments on the townspeople. And one of them was GMM. My mom was a journalist and she knew all about it before they silenced her. She takes a long drag of her cigar and just whoosh, puffs out. That's it, right uh, into Lucas's face. Yeah, right into Lucas's face. <laughs> <laughs> Too polite to overtly cough. <laughs> and she's like, "My mom knew all about it. It was, it was those three prophets that started it all." Oh, does she know how to cure it? Oh, no. She's like, I, I'm i happy to help keep the infected from Crafticor's hand. Because this is all just their little experiment anyway. They want you to be infected. I'm just keeping the infected out of their hands. Because who knows what those poor little lab rats will end up being once they go to Ekero. You mentioned Jonas. Is he going to be recognizably Jonas when we see <laughs> Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I didn't see him before he had the ugliness, so I couldn't really tell you. What does he look like He'll now? recognize you. He won't. Um, she's, she'll, yeah, she's like, oh, you don't have to worry about, you know, recognizing Jonas. Jonas will recognize you. You'll, you'll, you'll see everyone's, you know, fairly normal. Do you, she said you just have to to be crystal clear. You do not, the black hole does not cure people of the ugliness. It just, you keep them there. I'm keeping you safe so you don't land into Crafticore's hands. But not well, just safe. Oh, yeah, safe. I mean, they're all well. They're not emotionally well, but <laughs> it's a lot to take in. But no one's, no one's dying. Well, no one, no one at the black hole. There might be two people dying right now <laughs> in a fire. Know, but you and I don't know anything about we that. We don't know anything about that. <laughs> You're strangled like she's like I don't think she's like you don't have to worry this is not a sickness they're n people are not dying from it it's just you're different afterwards mm. well burning has always shows, been different man it never shows up in the same way you know never shows up in the same people in the same way and some people it ex faster and develops faster and some people develops slower. Hey, what great news, Birgit. You're going to yeah. be ugly for life. Birgit is like, <laughs> and as she freaks out, you can see even more her body starts to twist and change and she just kind of gets a hump and, and a new pattern appears. And an eye forms on her hand. <laughs> an eye forms on her hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to do. I want to do a science experiment. Make, come here. I'm Make, driving. What science, do you buddy. need? Uh, put it on autopilot. <laughs> That's not an option. I need to distract Birgit. You're a friend. Just distract her for a second. Okay, Birgit, come here. <laughs> Birgit, okay. come here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In my bag, there's 
a little bottle of oil. Can you get it out and oil up the nice woman's wheelchair, please? Okay, hold on. I can't see. Well, oh, I can see a little better than I'm used to being able to you see. Just stick your hand here. in there and look around. <laughs> 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 Be careful not to poke your eye out while you're in there. <laughs> Great. We'll say that Birkin is just too whelmed to do anything besides just listen to what you say without, like, becoming catatonic. I'm going to go up to Lucas and I'm just going to be like, how you doing, Lucas? Not good! <laughs> and then I'm going to I'm gonna start a sentence and then I'm going to, like, act surprised and I'm going to go, Oh my god, he's doing point and shoot! And then I'm going to point just sort of into the water and spin you around fast. <laughs> I want him to shoot the gun into the water. And then I want to be looking at Birgit to see if Birgit gets scared and if it advances when she gets scared. Okay. I don't think Lucas's reaction would be to shoot. It would be to He's stab not it with a hockey stick. So either you need to find a way to make it more likely that he'll shoot, or we can roll the dice. Or you find a different way to scare Birgit. He didn't like hunting, so... He didn't like hunting. Okay, I'll say, oh my god, a, an ADC urgent agent, oh my god, they're taking me Paul! Point shoot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna roll a dice. Are you a d6? You mean? Yeah, a d6. It's gonna be even shoot odd snow. No, he turns around. He goes. He like hugs the gun, and he is like, I think he drops it in the water. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You, like, spin him around while yelling that in his ear, and he gets, like, he, he like, thinks it's his hockey stick for a second, so he, like, pulls it up to be, like, his hockey stick, and then he realizes it's a gun, and he's like, what? <laughs> and then he throws it into the water. And he's like, oh, uh, Birdie, why did you do that? It's pitch black. We can't even see anything. Okay, I'm just gonna jump scare Birgit, then I'm just gonna, as she's digging her hand around in the bag, I'm gonna go up behind her and be like, boo. I don't know, I'm just gonna scare her somehow. Um. Or I'll sneak. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, or charm, but it's like inverse charm. <laughs> inverse charm? <laughs> Hmm. Neek would not go over very well. So I think I will. Okay, I'm going to reevaluate. Can I empathize with Birkett to find something that I can say to her that will really freak her out? Oh, for sure. Because she's not yeah. already really freaked out. You could, if you wanted to make her more freaked out. I want to acutely increase her anxiety level. Yeah, sure. I don't know how much more she can with it stand without passing out, but you can certainly try. <laughs> Do I roll for that? Is that a roll? Yeah, worthy yeah thing? it was okay. roll, roll, empathize. I like that as an idea. <laughs> Whoa. What? Oh my god. Oh dear Birgit Lord. girl, you scared. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to Birgit? She's like, she's like, I found it! And she like, she's like maybe recovered a, a, some level of like emotional stability like doing this menial task. Mm -hmm. And she like <laughs> hands it to Mick to like do the the WD-40 on the wheelchair. I will say Wow, Birkett, that was... Wow, you found Wait. in that bag... Okay. 
I will say this probably will affect your uh, her her loyalty to. You. I'll say like this is going to maybe work against her like taking a you know doing something prioritizing you guys over herself uh which you established last time yeah i think that's probably fine it's for science (laughs) it's for science science. be like wow bergy i'm so glad you helped that lady's wheelchair it's just so unfortunate that your parents will never know because you'll probably never get to see them again because they're going to the black hole. And I mean, as you know, science, black holes and everything ever goes away from a black hole. So you're just never going to see your family again. And so, I mean, you've probably already seen them for the last time in your entire life. <laughs> and she just, she's like, <sighs> I know, but, but at least I have you guys there as my friends. You no, know, unless we all get separated and then you don't even see us. And then you just sit around with this chimney pipe over here. <laughs> Okay, you succeed in scaring her. She just, she just like breaks down and is sobbing uncontrollably. We'll just say, she, like, utter despair. Does uh, she have any like rapid changes? Yes. So as she just like falls into the pits of despair, you see that the, you know, like she kind of got. A hump and you can see the rest of her body just like starts to twist and her spine elongates and kind of crunches over and she gets you know four more eyes um, <laughs> on her arm <laughs> and she is now we'll say two-thirds crazy mystery monster and just one third here human yeah that was you know She's got an eye on her neck now. I'm going to take a couple deep breaths. I'm going to go over to Lucas. I'm going to say, Lucas, I'm sorry for upsetting you earlier. It was my mistake. I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to do science. I've got my answer. So if you don't mind me, I'm going to go meditate for 100 years quietly over there, controlling my emotions. It's good knowing you. I'll pat you on the head, and then I'll go to the front of the boat and just sit down quietly. Yeah, hum aggressively loud. <laughs> um... <laughs> You can hear it. You can barely hear it over the boat. Louise is like, well, you guys are just a hoot, aren't you? (laughs) And she's like, don't fix my wheelchair. I keep it that way uh, for dramatic effect. (laughs) I like to keep all my opponents on their toes. So I will say you guys uh, land the boat no problems besides losing the gun. Um, and Birgit now accelerated has an eye on her losing neck. Losing Birgit. And Birgit is now no longer Lost your loyal Birgit. friend. Um, and uh, you arrive at a dock across the lake. With that, we will take a 10 minute break. And uh, find out what's going on with the black hole, and like if we can see Jonas, and like, do I want to see Jonas? I don't want I don't to know. see Jonas. Do you? No, I'll pass. No, I'm pretty taking clear. This no, boat back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's all we got. Okay. okay. <laughs>
Oh, hello. We just had a fun time learning facts about birds and how they can blow up like balloons. And no, that is not a thing that sounds like it should happen in Things from the Flood, but happens in real life. Um, meanwhile, our intrepid children have arrived at the scene of the black hole. Uh, Louise is wheeling her way across this jetty leading them into a structure that seems like a farm. They can see, um, you know, there's some lights in a building. They can see like flickering torch lights. They can see uh, a farm, what looks like an old farm and uh, three barns and maybe like an old, uh, you know, uh, 18 wheeler just like hanging out abandoned um over over the side but looks like not a whole heck of a lot there's nobody else really close by no other buildings really close by it's just this farm and that's that's where she's leading you guys unless you want to do anything differently no i don't think so follow her to the farm Mm-hmm. Okay. You open, uh, she leads you to the farm. You hear a bunch of people inside. They all sound, you know, relatively normal. Um, she opens, there's no like animal noises or anything like that. <laughs> I might need like more normal for the farm. No sounds of, you know, plants growing or what was the lizard sounds? What were we worried about? Bacteria sounds. <laughs> Bacteria sounds. The sounds, no sounds of amoebas. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> I'm looping. No, uh, but you do hear that people are fighting. Um, it sounds like. Um, you know, you can hear the sound of like people crying. You can hear people it sounds like arguing or like having fist fights. Um, and uh, doesn't bother Louise none at all. Um, she just keeps wheeling away, and she leads you up to the door, and she says, "Welcome to the black hole." And she kicks open the door with her good leg. Uh, <laughs> And leads you through, and you can see that it is a two-story farmhouse, um, and it's just, like, been totally abandoned. There's, like, trash on the floor. Um, there's broken, you know, bottles everywhere. People have been, like, drinking away their pain. Um, there's people who have covered, who are just, like, lying on the floor or, like, on whatever furniture remains there and they've like covered themselves up because they're like too embarrassed about how they look um there's people who are um who aren't worried about how they look who are f just like fighting like with each other over alcohol or you know pain meds or whatever it is um, and you can see, so there's kind of like the despondent people who are lying. There's the people who are fighting with each other. They all have various forms of, you know, deformity. And then you can see over in another kind of corner in the way back, um, beyond a pile of scraps and machinery, there's someone who looks like he might have been Jonas. At one point in time, um, from afar, he doesn't look too different, but he is also covered in old bed sheets. He's made kind of this toga out of bed sheets, and you can see that he has an, a whole group of people. It sounds like they're like listening to him. Um, you know, there's kind of a, a semicircle of people around him, also in bed sheets, and they compared to like the anarchy of everybody else seem like a little click that has formed um the blue bed sheet click so is there any becky with the good scales yeah oh becky with the good scales is definitely there oh your international danish woman <laughs> your international danish lizard woman is here she is currently drunk out of her mind Becky. With, with a vodka bottle. Probably fighting somebody else that. 
probably fighting somebody for the bottle. I don't know what. And the Louise, <laughs> Louise, Louise, Louise is, is like, like what? she was the like, "Fuck." Welcome to the black hole. I can't promise a lot, but I can promise Craftacore won't get you here. I don't know how they haven't found you already. There's like literally no one for miles. Hmm. They're not really laying low. No, it's some Lord of the Flies level uh, of humanity happening right now. Mm. But when you look around, you recognize that they all used to be people that went to, you know, went to your school. More than 10. More than you than the 10 that you knew about. Yes, Logan? No, that's the wrong That's game. a thinking. That's a... Th you always get me with the two different... It's got a touch... You have to touch, touch your tip, actual nose. Tippy, yeah. toppy part of the nose. <laughs> Uh, ooh. what a big time too, guys. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Jonas sees you from across the room, and he says, "Louise, you bring new believers to me." And he, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> He's like your situation right there. He strides over the trash piles, dodges the the people with the fisty cuffs, and he comes over to give you a slap on the back. Give Birgit a slap on the back. And he says, I see you have contracted the divine disease. Welcome. The ugliness will show the truth. I'm gonna draw as my sixteen-year-old cult leader in the cards. As you look at Jonas, you notice that his mouth is much wider than usual, and his jaws enlarged, and he now drools a little bit because of you know his lips. His bottom jaw doesn't match his top jaw, um, <laughs> and yes, he's just kind of divine. cratery. Uh, cratery skin texture all over his body in patches. You would probably think he looked like a burned victim if you didn't know that he had been infected with the, the divine disease. Oh. Well, in that case. Um. Oh, hey, Jonas. How's it going? Birdie, you have come to see the light too, I see. You look great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Stick that This dial. is my new and true form. The ugliness uh, teaches us, it separates us from the liars of, the, of, the, of society. We see the truth. We can no longer focus on the outer appearance of others to see, uh, to see each other's goodness. The ugliness levels all playing fields. Everyone is equal in it. You know, that's very persuasive, Joe. <laughs> If I know anything about societies, it's that that won't last. So let me tell you. <laughs> Can I, I get you yeah. a bed sheet? <laughs> I think Birkett would love a bed sheet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think Lucas is just shell shocked, and he's like, "Um, I, I, I think we can go now." And leave Birkett. I want to go home. Because we can't go home. We killed two people. <laughs> you you people? killed two people. No. I, I didn't mean that. I'm <laughs> killed two people. <laughs> Rig the car. 
somehow. No, it hit a tree and it exploded, but we were partially at fault for that. Because we put them in that car that exploded. (laughs) Really, you put them in that car that exploded. Jonas is like, my, it sounds like you had quite the journey to get here. Jonas, it is hard to get to the black hole when there are your dad's boyfriend is trying to abduct you. Everything is hard. It's just a proof of your worth of the ugliness. You have survived and you are now worthy. Of- I don't want, I would like to not be worthy. <laughs> Jonas He's like putting a bed sheet around you. As no, 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 you. no, no. <laughs> I think Lucas pulls out his hockey stick and he's like, Jonas, I'm about this <laughs> close to just mentally breaking down. So if you touch any one of us again, I will beat your goddamn <laughs> giant mouth into the top of your skull. So take a step back and you better start talking. <laughs> He's already killed two people tonight, Jonas. Some people aren't ready for the truth. (laughs) Um, I knew you were a tweet piece of shit in school, so you better (laughs) prove you're better than that now, at least. Are you trying to ask him something, or are you just just reacting? He's just reacting, but Jonas seems very willing to talk about himself and this ugliness, so I think he's also egging him on slightly to explain himself. To have Jonas explain himself. Okay. Um, I think if you want new information, you'll have to roll. Otherwise, he's going to tell you all about the righteousness of the ugliness and how it equalizes society and how it makes people focus on, you know. And that's not going to just solve everything for us? No. (laughs) I'll put it this way. Jonas has 100% embraced the ugliness as a beneficial obviously thing so he like wants everybody to have it. He's like, you should have the ugliness and you should have the ugliness. Like it is a good thing for society so if you want to like get beyond that Jonas do you even need know how to give people the ugliness some people are um, chosen some people you know are to chosen take the ugliness away from people who were chosen but are now <laughs> deserved to be unchosen uh, you, uh, again you'll have to Role to can to to get some good answers to the get the good goods. Charm, I can charm him. I can charm, yeah. I'll charm instead if you want me to. How good are you at charming? Is it heart six good? Is five good? Five's Apparently. okay. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, okay. Lucas is not feeling charming or leady or anything. Jonas, I don't want your bed sheet. <laughs> well, fine. But I do want really charming already. <laughs> more information from you, Jonas, because we heard you went missing, and we've been missing you, Jonas. <laughs> Lucas conspicuously looks away. (laughs) Jonas? So why don't you just tell us what you know? (laughs) Persuasive as always, make. That was so charming. (laughs) So charming. You get zero successes. Um... You're gonna have to take a condition. Uh huh. Um. And I'm gonna be upset. Fair. Uh, Jonas. Jonas is just—he's uh, like I can tell that you're like not really 
ready to listen to me. Jonas, I am not not ready to listen. Just what? tell me what you have to say. <laughs> Jonas. Jonas. I'll take your bed sheet. I want to try and charm Jonas. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, I'll say, Jonas, Jonas, d- don't listen. They're not worthy. Jonas, they're not worthy of the ugliness. Because one of them has demonstrated violence and the other has neglected to embrace the bed sheet. <laughs> Two terrible crimes. So they're not worthy, Jonas. But I mean, I'm ready for the ugliness. Now tell me what you know about this <laughs> lovely thing <laughs> so I can fully embrace it. Jonas? <laughs> My good I Natalie love friend. saying the name multiple times definitely makes it more charming. You're really mm. establishing that rapport. I know you, Jonas. I've spoken <laughs> to you at least once. Mm-hmm. I know your grandpa. I've seen him while I was breaking into your room, but that's neither here nor there. So tell me about this disease, this gift, as I charm you. Okay. Can I shoehorn in my oracle cards? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you haven't used them yet, have you? Mm Mm-mm. All right, I'll let you shoehorn them in if you can think of a fun way to do it. I'll say, Jonas, I, I, I am also, I also have a, a gift. I can see things from the, I, that are divine, Jonas. I saw this coming. I saw your ugliness from far. <laughs> from afar, not just in space, but in time, Jonas. I saw that you were destined to be ugly from a young age. Here, let me demonstrate, and I'll take out my tarot cards and I will do a quick reading to show him that him and Birgit are truly ugly. Divinely ugly. And then I will also show that I am ugly from the cards so that I am worthy. So my future is Uh, in ugliness. Are you going to say that out loud? Like, will other people hear you? Or are you just going to secretly convey that through the cards? Uh, it'll be like I reveal a card and it's the same thing for him and I'm like oh see that means that you were destined to be ugly and then I'll do the same thing for Birgit and then I'll flip mine silently but I'll look at him with a knowing look and be like okay got it cool great doesn't work Jonas oh thank god oh yay one success All right, so your your charm is just uh, tell us what you know about the ugliness. Tell us what you know, and if you know how to take this divine gift away from from somebody. <laughs> well, you successfully charmed Jonas, and maybe Jonas had a secret crush on you that you didn't know about, and Clearly. so he is like, "Oh, Birdie, I always knew that you had." the eyes to see and the ears to hear um just and- two of both of those <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like and i i you know as the chosen one of the ugliness i did happen to see the origin of uh its existence you could say um and he just kind of like puffs himself up and you can tell he's waiting for you to like be like yeah yeah tell me more. <laughs> and he's like, use that large mouth tell me all about it <laughs> <laughs> he's just like well i was staying late for the math wands that i i'm in <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know principal yarnick lives right next door to the school so he stays pretty late because he can just like pop over it's not a long commute so one day i was at school late because of uh the mathalons and principal yarnick was just also there and he was wasn't le- he wasn't in his office he was in the cafeteria um and i saw him just 
sprinkle a little something, something on the food. You know, I thought it was nutritional. I thought it was one of those new. <laughs> I love nutritional sprinkles at nighttime. <laughs> Alert the nutritional sprinkles, Jonas. You are really onto something. Um, and oh he said, "I managed to snag." He he dropped. You know, he did like a a, a vial for every you know pan that was gonna be in the cafeteria. And he's like, "I managed to snag one." Like he didn't. He didn't. Um, he didn't take them all back he left one behind and he produces a vial that matches the vials that oh my God, you I've never found. seen any vial like this in my life yeah and he's like that's you know i followed i knew something was weird so i followed him back to his office and i looked into his office and he wasn't there and then when I went to leave the school, I saw him coming out from the basement. So there must be some sort of thing that some some secret passageway or something that gets gets you from his office to the, the basement. basement. Yeah. Okay. Well, behold, the, the things relic. are in And he's like, basement. "You may touch the relic of the ugliness," and he like gives it to you to like hold to get the the holy powers of the ugliness. Oh, the vial? Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I'll pick it up with my good hand and say, wow, that is some divine vial. Anyway, I'm gonna go spread the good news of the ugliness to He's like, give the... me the vial back, please. <laughs> you can have the vial back. Okay, well, we're going to go spread the good news of the ugliness mm. to everyone at school. Mm. And we will let you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Please take care of our good friend, Birkett. She is... She has a lot of eyes. And she does <laughs> not know how to adapt to that. <laughs> so just take... Maybe cover most of them with the bed sheet so she just has her two. <laughs> Birkett has been sipping on some vodka to calm down while uh, she, Jonas has been talking to you. So she has, I think, slipped into a vodka-induced nap. Um, great. Anything else you guys want to wanna sneak around and see? Is there anything else to sneak around and see? I mean, you could talk to the other kids that are not oh in God. the cult. Becky. Yeah, I mean, we could we talk could to talk, Becky. You could try and talk to Becky. As you look around, you stumble over a cornbread skillet. <gasps> <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Lucas just wants to leave. So, Louise is gonna be like, "Oh, you can't, can't let any craft core agents know we're here, because they'll take these kids and they'll use them as guinea, guinea pigs for their science experiments." I'll this is only where here is. is. <laughs> I'll exactly. Take Louise's hand and I'll be like Louise. I would die before I helped craft decor, and he would kill before he would help craft decor. And Mick, well, Mick would never help craft decor. <laughs> <laughs> She's not very helpful, all things considered. Mick so only, even if she tried, only exacerbates situations. <laughs> uh, Louise help, is like, it would okay. be in a worse place. She's like, I'm gonna have to blindfold you as a. You know, as I drive the boat back, you guys. You made me drive here, here Louise. That doesn't me. make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was the pitch black of night. It's almost dawn now. You could recognize uh, directional features. So now you're going to drive your boat? Yeah. So I didn't have <laughs> I to drive have it. The... No, it was just a power play. You're all about the power, Louise. 
<laughs> Ma'am, <laughs> Ma'am, I think you don't understand that you're not really in control of this situation anymore. So I don't think there's a point in a power play. <laughs> She's like, whatever, you guys, you know, just get on to your little Scooby gang and leave these kids out of it. And she starts up the boat engine and is like, blindfolds or no blindfolds? <laughs> Let's get the blindfolds on so we can leave this place, Lucas. <laughs> so we can go away from the black hole to our homes and then the school basement. Where nothing bad has ever happened. Sure. No stinky stink pipes have ever been in school basements. <laughs> I forgot about stinky stink pipes. School basements mean electric spookers are right around the corner, so it's actually something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Get that blindfold on and get into the stranger's boat. Let's go. Yeah, Lucas does that. Great. Grumpily. It's cool. Louise is too self-centered to to care. Um, <laughs> self-centered on her revenge vendetta to care. Um, and so she drives y'all on back. She tells you, we're here. Hey, Louise. Whips off the blindfolds. Okay, Louise. We're Seems gonna like go. the fire has gone out. Good. No trees are alight anymore. No trace of the van. No wreckage at all. Um, looks like an explosion. But uh, Rudy is there. All Even, strangely enough, all the glass from breaking the windows is gone. So there's, like, smoke marks from where things exploded. But there's literally no rubble or wreckage or anything like that. Like, Rudy is untouched. Wow, see, Lucas, it was all a group hallucination. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, look at that. Looks like you don't need that Malachite anymore. I'll just take that and that. Whoop, okay, let's go. (laughs) Oh. I hate that so much. (laughs) Lucas is like, what? (laughs) That means somebody was definitely here. No, it means nobody was ever here. Including us. We've never been here. There's because... no way we had a four-person group hallucination. Five-person group hallucination. That's how that group two hallucinations work. tried work. to steal us. I guess the universe is giving you an out for the horrible crime you've committed. You should take it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Lucas is just like, well, whatever. Apparently it didn't happen, so let's just go. Before we leave, I'm going to talk to Luis and say, okay, Luis, well, we're going to go F up Crafty Core, so I guess we'll see you later unless you have anything you want to do to help us go really, really ruin their days. Just watch out for those profits. Yeah, we probably should have asked more about that, but it, I guess we'll never know now. <laughs> so, bye. Pro- pro- <laughs> what? The three profits. Didn't ask about them. <laughs> <laughs> they seemed... Like they were, I mean, we're going to find out about them one way or another. <laughs> I was already going to watch out for him, and now I know I'm going to watch out for him. <laughs> I hate it. Okie dokie. Y'all got to move back home. I'll drive um, us back home. And I'm going to say that it is, you're going to need two successes. Yeah. Because there is heightened craft decor stops and investigations for infected peoples. So if you want to Somebody want to lead me? Or I lead. 
I'll lead. Lucas will lead. Grudgingly. How will he lead? Yeah, I don't know. What day was it that we came? Y'all went? Okay, gosh. It was a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Because the dance was last night. Yep. So now it is So Sunday it's a morning. Sunday morning. Okay. That's fine. Um, <sighs> yeah. He's just like, okay, we gotta get back before your dad finds out that we've been gone. And before Birdie's dad finds out that you've been gone for super long. My parents won't care, so it's fine. But I do need to feed Meatball, so actually, that's the real lead that's happening here. <laughs> I gotta get back to Meatball. Okay. May the power of lead Good continue. Okay, Two dice. Good. I'm nervous. Oh god. Oh. Yeah, I'm nervous I'm for scared. you. I'm <laughs> scared. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh lord. Uh How do I want this to happen? Man, I didn't expect you not to get this. Um, okay. So always I'll expect say, the unexpected. I should I know. I mean, been really rolling with the 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 unexpected. The you guys won't get stopped. But Rudy will be flagged. So, like, they, you guys manage just by the skin of your teeth to, like, evade the patrols of Craft Accord. Rudy's a wanted vehicle now. But Rudy, his aqua colored self, <laughs> and his sidecar is highly distinguishable. And it seems <laughs> that Craft Accord has become aware. <laughs> Of Rudy's presence. Of antagonistic forces using Rudy. <laughs> we would never. So you can now no longer uh, use Rudy surreptitiously. You know, like okay. you're not going to get bonuses in the same way kind of from Rudy. Can't root around. Root around. Can't so, root around. You guys go, are you going to everybody's houses or are you going just to one house and have a sleepover, walk in somewhere else? Does anybody actually have a garage? Or I have a garage. Uh, I was going to say I probably have one. I think we park Rudy in Lucas's garage and sleep at Lucas's house. Mm -hmm. Who's your anchor? Your dad? Okay. I mean, it's already the morning, so... Power nap? Power nap? I need to zoom Guru Pedals in the East. It doesn't exist yet. I could Astral project. <laughs> You can call her up. You can meet in the plane. dreamscape. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay. We'll go to his house. So we're going to have a sleepover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. You rock up <laughs> to uh, you rock up to your house. Do the usual sleepover routine. What does Meatball have today for food? Um, let's see. I think I have leftover arcade food because I hang out there all the time. So I've got like, 
Cold so nacho cool. cheese. Like dried, <laughs> yeah. dried nacho cheese. Chili nachos and maybe some pizza slices and like half of a burger. And so I eat the burger and the pizza and some of the fries. And then I give Meatball the fries and a bit of pizza. Cool. Meatball, as always, is so pleased. And how how do you uh, reduce your how do you interact with Meatball to soothe your conditions besides feeding him such such delicacies? I mean, yeah. I think I like compulsively check his body like for anything that could be wrong with him like looking for any marks anything that could be going wrong any growths and like <laughs> all is just like Wah? Wah? I'm like um okay meatball we have a serious situation on our hands things are getting out of control with these bodies lately I don't know what I've touched. I don't know what you've touched. I don't know what they've touched. Everyone's taking a bath right this second. And so I give Meatball a bath. Which Meatball does not like. But I use Meatball like a rag doll. So Meatball accepts his fate. And understands that he cannot escape my will. <laughs> and so he's just very sad and grumpy. And like meowing plaintively as I give him a bath. And I say, it's for your own good, Meatball. <laughs> I'm like crying. <laughs> I know you don't want this. Okay, you get to clear your conditions. I go up to Nick while that is happening. <laughs> like, Nick, I have a favor to ask of you. Okay. It might make you really uncomfortable, but I really need... Um, it can't get much worse. I need to borrow your body. What does that mean? <laughs> I I need you to I need I need a guru pedal session, but she is not here. So I need you to be her for me. I'll tell you what to say. You just have to say it back to me. Okay. Okay, so now let's assume Assume the position. About and pose. <laughs> And then I'll, like, correct your mountain pose. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. So now you... Now you say... What bothers you? Marty. <laughs> what? What's troubling you today? Ah, guru paddle. I've become infected with the ugly, and I haven't told either of my friends. <laughs> Um, wow, that comes as quite a shock. Guru Petal's never shocked by anything, so you have oh. to just be open to the idea. Wow. Has have you considered embracing this opportunity? <laughs> you know, I have. I've recently met a boy. I've For the first time, I think. I've never actually met him, I don't think. His name is Jonas. And he... He was very persuasive with it. He says that the ugliness is the truth that evens the playing field. And you know, that's not any different than opening the 47th chakra. You know what you said, right? Boys are temporary. The 47th chakra is eternal. <laughs> exactly. And so I was thinking, I don't know if I need to cure this ugliness, but I don't really want the ugliness. I mean, look at it. It's horrifying. I'll show you my hand. Not horrifying, an opportunity. <laughs> now I don't need to know. I need to know if I need to tell my friend Goob. I cannot tell Lucas for obvious reasons. You should be I always uh, share with Mister Meatball. You should be open with your friend, just as turquoise is open to diamond. I hadn't seen it from that perspective guru petal that makes perfect sense when you need yes the, the diamond into the turquoise yes it just makes perfect sense do you have okay. any other questions for me <laughs> 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 a 
what is my what is my um oh god what are those things called what's my horoscope tell me for for the, the for today because i think we're about to do something quite dangerous guru pendle and i don't your I don't. horoscope says a smack and wrench is in your future if you don't tell your friends <laughs> I don't. I need to think about that. I don't exactly know what that means. <laughs> okay, and then I'll walk you through the rest of the yoga session. <laughs> Sarah, I want that to count as an anchor because Abby did a good job being Goober Pedal. You get one condition cleared. Oh, thank God. Okay. I'm no longer scared. Good. Good choice. Okay, I'm going to go call my dad on the landline. Mm, great. Lucas, can I use your phone? Yeah. I think he's kind of mad at you, so he's he's not been hanging out with you guys. Okay, thanks. He's still in the bathroom. But <laughs> ring, Hello? Ring. <laughs> Wow, masterful Foley work by everyone. <laughs> Hello? Who is this? Uh, <laughs> this is Mick. Is this Dad? Yep. Hi. Mick, where, what have you, party girl, you, what have you been up to? Not partying, that's for sure. <laughs> sure, sure, I was No, for, re for real this time. <laughs> Uh -huh. Not the kind of party anyone wants to go to, at least. Are you at least with friends? Yeah, Birdie, and I'm staying at um, Birdie's house tonight. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. That meatball, he always keeps a responsible eye on. No, meatball's not at Birdie's house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Great, I got it. You're at Birdie's. Those Stuffed crabs always keep a responsible eye on <laughs> Yeah, but, um, Dad, did you hear about prom last night? Mm, I heard some, yeah, I heard you guys partied so hard, you shut down the electricity. And everybody had to go home. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, I thought it was one of those new raves that I've heard about. No, have you heard about the disease breakout? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're, I know. we're remember we talked about that. Yeah, I couldn't come home cuz um quarantining since we were exposed at prom. I don't know if you knew about that. No, nobody else, nobody other no other parents have been doing that. Oh, well that that's cuz they're ben not is back. He's right across the street. Who is? And you know the, the the other guy that lives that goes to your high school that went to prom. That oh, I forgot about Ben. Well, that's because Ben's parents are irresponsible. But Dad, I know you're <laughs> responsible, so you're going to support my quarantine. <laughs> well, honey, you do know that I support you and everything. Where's Where's uh Where's Rudy? Wait, Rudy's always with me. What do you mean? Okay. Okay. I don't know. I just maybe some strange men came and asked me about Rudy, and I I told him that you you just are a mechanic for pleasure and not for um actually building <laughs> usable <laughs> vehicles. Yep, is Rudy is okay? not road legal. That's for sure. Everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Um, did, is Alex you there? Want me to come pick you up? No, I'm okay. Oh. Don't please don't. You don't want to expose you. Okay. Is yeah. Alex there? No, but he said he was coming by later in the night. He's bringing a bottle of wine. Oh my gosh, that's so romantic and good to hear. Well, yes. I think that once Alex gets there, you two should quarantine because you never know who's been exposed. But how long to quarantine, honey? When am I going to see you? You should come back. You have back. to stay six feet apart, and you have to quarantine for at least ten days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what Craft Decor said in their well, announcement. Well, Craft Decor, that Craft Decor doesn't know what is going to hit them. Let me We're tell you that. Don't listen it's to that. It's a wrench. 
<laughs> a smack and wrench. It's, is it's a smack hit. and wrench. All I'm saying is this disease keeps changing, and they keep changing their mind on what you're supposed to do. So I just want you to play it safe and Honey, have a good time a with Alex and a bottle of wine. Do you think because there was a breakout you? at school? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Okay, okay, I get it. I'm out of touch. You know, you got to have your time to do teen things and hang with your friends and quarantine. I get it. I get it. I know what quarantine means. I got it. Uh, <laughs> just, just, you know, just, are you going to school tomorrow? No, we can't, Dad, because we're quarantining. I think Principal Yarnick would have told me if school was canceled. Have you seen Principal Yarnick? No, but, you know, he's a nice guy. Mm. He would inform parents of uh, if school was canceled. Yeah, but he's not going to cancel school, Dad, because he already got the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and... it all makes sense now. I got it. Yeah, but, um... Okay, okay. Oh, Alex is here. So Oh, can okay. I well, can I talk to him? Yeah. Alex. You hear the phone shuffling. Mick wants to talk to you. He's like, oh, okay. Hey Mick, what's up? Hi, I just wanted to let you know that you need a quarantine with dad because there's a um disease on the loose and it got released well not really released there's a exposure at prom okay <laughs> um, I'll get him on some dandelion detox smoothies right right away yeah that'll kick this in the butt that'll kick this in the butt you haven't like have you had a headache recently that's one of the symptoms <laughs> no no you're doing you know good me, well I'm healthy as a horse Healthy as a horse. Yep. Well, I heard you have a bottle of wine, so have fun with that. Make make. Well, no some... more wine now. Only dandelion smoothies. I thought you had a bottle you know, of wine. Your dad has been taking ibuprofen. I don't know if we can. He needs to have a dandelion smoothie anyway to get all that junk out of his okay, system. Okay, juice cleanse on your quarantine. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, that's Where all. are you? I'm at Birdie's house. Okay. Great. Stay safe. Bye. Okay, bye. Can I talk to Dad again? Yes. <laughs> Hi, hon. What's up? Hi. I just wanted to say I love you, and that's all. <laughs> love you, too. You know what's really good for the soul when, when you're quarantining? Flowers. So be sure to go out there and smell the roses, even if you're quarantined. You Aww. know me. That's so sweet. May oh, well, maybe when the shop's closed, I'll stop by and get a flower, too. Okay, good. Sounds good. All right. Love you, honey. Call I love me you if too. you need anything. Okay, I will. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Another productive conversation with dad. <laughs> really, really feels like <laughs> feels like you're making progress. <laughs> Great, clear your condition. Thanks. Party. What? Oh, do you want a dandelion smoothie? I can go make one. Oh, you heard that? Your dad talks really loudly on the phone. That was Alex. I know. What? But it seems fine. Seems okay. You mean Agent 443? That Alex? What? I whip out the, <laughs> the badge. This Alex? Oh, can I have that? Why? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Is it the hand that has the ugliness that you use to whip out? Yeah, probably. Oh. Here, can I have that back? And I take it in my other hand. This, this Alex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Alex. But, Birdie, we already tested if he was... But I think 
It's fine. I think there's two Alexes, and one of them, I imagined, apparently, and the other one is okay. What you just described is not fine. (laughs) (laughs) You said it really reassuringly, but it's still not what fine. It is fine. Lucas is imagining things on a pinball machine. You're imagining things about your mom. And I'm imagining things about Alex. And that's okay. Thank okay, yeah, sure. That, that does make sense. I'm not going to emotionally react to that because I don't want this horrible affliction to progress. What horrible affliction? My generalized anxiety. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, um, Lucas, how much longer are you going to be in there with that cat? As long as we need. (laughs) Okay, well, I think he doesn't like it, so you should wrap up and come out here. (laughs) Okay. Lucas is now hugging Meatball in a towel. Meatballs wrapped in a towel, wet. <laughs> Still meowing, sort I of. Think, wait, hold on. Softly. Does Meatball have a little a head turban? Like you put a little like head towel on him? <laughs> 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 because I want that to happen, even if it does. Yes, he went full spa mode. Yeah. Gave him a little head head wrap. To get his head dry. He still looks rather wet and miserable, though. But Lucas refuses to let go of him. Okay. Hey, thank you for joining us, Lucas. I'm going to be honest, I felt a disturbance in my 47th chakra, and I know that I need to take my diamond energy, and I need to combine that with my turquoise energy. And you know what that means. I have to become totally honest, even if I know it'll hurt you my honesty, because that's that's how I need to do Isn't this. Isn't that usually how your honesty works, Birdie? I'm not going to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think your honesty definitely hurt Birgit yesterday. That was Probably for permanently. That was That was for science. <laughs> Science hurts people sometimes. Yeah, because... you're a real scientific person. Is that right, Meatball? I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm where science and non-ethics meet. It's called psychology. Anyway, it's called 1970s psychology. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that I was infected with the ugly, and you're making it really hard to do so, Luke. As you get more upset, you see the little tendrils get a little bigger um, and shrink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gasp. <gasps> I had no idea. Lucas is like, so that's what you were did with the vial? You infected you yourself? No, I didn't infect myself. I infected Agent 443 and I just happened to get caught in the crossfire. <laughs> I mean, I just happened to get caught in the crossfire, Lucas. And now I can't emotionally react because this terrible disease spreads. Which is why I think we should go confront Yarnik in that school basement so we can help all of those people back at the black hole. And me. And you. Well, I do agree we have to do something to help because that lady, she might be hiding them away, but she's not doing anything to make them better. I think she's actually harming them emotionally. I think she is also actively making things worse. Jonas is delusional. (laughs) Yes. It's those math lots. I knew it it was always the math (laughs) lots. Imagine the state of Birgit when we go back to get her. Where will she be mentally? Who knows? I don't want Maybe to be actually better off than around us. 
<laughs> but also, Yarnik is infecting. It doesn't really make any sense. I don't know if we want to even confront him or just go to the basement and get the cure no, and leave. We hold him at hockey stick and we say, you tell us everything you know. Mm-hmm. Killed you before. Know. And I'm not willing to kill again, but I am willing to maim. <laughs> Normally I would be against violence, but I've felt that there's going to be smacking wrench in my future, so I am inclined to agree. Smacking I think we'll go with hockey stick. What if we, like, tape the wrench to the end of the hockey stick? Then you've created a leaded hockey stick way <laughs> is more violent. What if we attached a car battery and some wire I to your hockey stick? I was thinking about electrifying the we hockey stick. We can't use Rudy. What if we take the battery out of Rudy <laughs> and put it on your hockey stick? These are. This is the kind of thinking that we need to get things done. Do we... Okay, what if we... It's Sunday. School's still out. Maybe Yarnik is at his house. We could try and scope out the school again. Find information and then confront Yarnik. Now that we know there's a secret passage in his office, we could go back. Remember when there was someone moving in his office that we couldn't see? What if they were in that secret passage? Someone moving in his office? There was someone moving and we couldn't see them. No. Y'all thought it we was Alan them. for a second, and then we heard them oh my moving gosh. around. We heard someone moving in the hallway or whatever. You thought you heard Alice, and then you checked it out, and it was not a spirit. You could not get them to do what you wanted, and they were not aware of you. I had forgotten about that terrifying piece of information, <laughs> so I'm glad we brought the it back to the surface were again. Off and flickered on. Hmm. Let's go rip out every wire in that office till we find <laughs> the secret passage. <laughs> Some type of energy source down there is using a lot of energy. I don't like it. Okay. That's the best the goal is we have. secure. Secondary goal, confront Yarnik with the hockey stick. Tertiary goal. In the house. Tertiary goal, cure Bergen. But we think... <sighs> Tertiary goal, fix whatever is going on at Black Hole, because that is an unsustainable living situation. <laughs> It sustains itself through the rules of uh, Darwinism. Mm. Do we think pulse. that Yarnik is actually bad, or is he being blackmailed into just infecting people? I didn't think Only he was bad like bad people are blackmailed. He's already automatically bad because Only he did bad it in the first place. Only bad people have secret tunnels in their offices. He's yeah. culpable either way. This yes. is true. Sometimes okay. when you commit a crime, even if you don't know you're committing the crime, it's still an egregious offense. Isn't that right, Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lucas, do you want me to electrify your hockey stick? No, this one's my lucky hockey stick. Let me get my other hockey stick. Back up. I imagine you have a closet that's full of hockey sticks. Oh, yeah, at least. I have a hockey full of ho- uh, a closet full of hockey sticks. Each one is labeled like different things for like why they're special and they need to be kept. Um, Great. Yeah. So, or you have to go upstairs to get it? <laughs> I don't uh, like your questioning. <laughs> no, where it is? Where where are all my hockey sticks? Uh, they might be in the garage. Cause I think I have my bro like stuff from my brothers in there too. Mm-hmm. So it's like he played hockey. Well, so it's like rude. his your hockey parents, stick. Your parents think your brother's still alive, so his like yeah. room is still. Yeah, his room's fine. It's not like. 
it's no, it's just Lucas being weird. So stuff that he's obsessively kept. Okay. Like so his go get the old hockey sticks, sticks from the garage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On your way back, you walk by your brother's door and you see that the computer has flickered on. <laughs> 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 and you see one letter at a time. It's a 90s computer, so it's like black screen with, you know, like green letters. Um, and it comes up, and then you see it's spelling out Lucas. Dot, dot, dot. It's me. <laughs> dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is Come like find me. Meg <laughs> <laughs> Come what? here. Okay. And he's like walking. He's like slowly walking towards the computer, opening the door. Or uh, did he say opening the computer? Opening the door, like going towards the computer. Does it, is it still, the message still up? Yeah, it'll say, you need to hurry. And I feel like it'll stay up and Mick will get, but it'll shut off after Mick gets there. Like it'll be, Mick can see it, but it'll disappear after, you know, a few seconds. I'm run, run into the room. Lucas, did you get infected too? No! Did you see the computer? That! It just talked to me! I look at it. I see it. It shuts off. Lucas. Great. That's... That's... That's up there! <laughs> I'm not crazy! It's real! That's my brother! Let's take a step back. Take a step back! He steps towards the computer. <laughs> <laughs> that explosion was real, too, and it didn't happen, apparently. So, we can't trust what our eyes see anymore. If we can't trust what our eyes see, what can we trust? What our third eye sees. <laughs> I'm here, not here, get out <laughs> I peg a stone at your third eye. <laughs> what can we trust? We can trust that we three exist. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Solipsism? <laughs> <laughs> We've moved from just yourself to three people. Uh... <laughs> All right. Unless Lucas, you want to do something right now, I'm going to. Let Lucas is Mick, okay. Lucas, I'm, I'm on it. You're I'm out. Re- I'm gonna, I'm gonna type on this. Com- well, I'm gonna like make your computer whiz. You can figure out what just happened. If, gonna, so- if someone's missing with us, you would be able to find out. I'm gonna track. The IP of the message. <laughs> okay. You're going to computer that computer real good. going to hack it so it's good. It's tell you everything it knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> calculate. I think you have to calculate. calculate. Do electronic things, yeah. Or program. Oh, program. You're right. It is program. Okay, program. Manipulate computer programs and electronic devices. Yep. This program. Pro hacker. Pro hacker. Secretly a hacker and not just a mechanic. Um, <laughs> what? Da, 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 what is? You just get it. The ability uh, to move. Program makes things technically. Create. You manipulate. You're manipulating. So Calculate is the ability to know how they work. So you can you can find out what's an IP address tell you? It tells you the location, location generally. Yeah. It's the IP so address. you find out that this is like 
the where your brother essentially disappeared is where this is coming from which we said was in the rising waters of mm-hmm. the evacuated zone all right the lucas zone. <clears throat> I have some good news and I have some bad news. Which would you like first? <laughs> because it's like, I don't care. Just tell me. Okay, I'm gonna say the good news is that no, let's go with bad news first. The bad news <laughs> is that that might be your brother. The good news is that that might be your brother, but I think <laughs> um, I never considered the possibility of a soul having like a digital imprint, but I think that's what's happened. <laughs> You're telling me he's stuck in the computer? No, he's not. No, I'm just the idea of him is stuck in the internet. Did you watch that weird Matrix movie? Mm hmm. You it's know a- that's not real life, right? Lucas, think about it. <laughs> Bernie's been seeing things that disappear. We've been seeing things that disappear. Deaths don't matter, things don't make sense. There is no spoon. <laughs> he goes, tell me where that message came from. It came from the swamp. It came from the flooded Sorry, the area? The correct pronunciation is the swamp. It came from the swamp! <laughs> Not the swamp, but the swamp. The swamp! <laughs> Oh my god. He must still be out there. (laughs) And with that, we'll end the episode. (laughs) We need help. I knew it. (laughs) I knew it. Oh my gosh. So, next week... We don't play this game. We play a different game. We'll feel much more spectacularly. Where we always need help. Where I have definitely murdered at least two people. (laughs) Oh my god, same, same. Also with utility, you you know, tools that aren't meant necessarily for murdering. Vans. Oh no, these this baby were built for (laughs) great so we learned so much this episode yep nobody's happy about it I feel like this is the episode where I call it learning if you presented information but I did not retain or understand it (laughs) yeah true I think the comprehension part of this is missing the introduction to new knowledge did happen Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm We learned so much. It's a complete lack of comprehension. (laughs) You aren't meant to understand. I don't even understand. I haven't read all the way to the end of uh, the whole arc. So, you know, I'm sure I'll get some twists and turns with good old things from the flood. So, next week we'll be playing Burning Wheel Mm -hmm. for Logan's the GM. And I get to make Sarah feel uncomfortable with the information I give her. (laughs) We really just trade off that responsibility. And me and we are just stuck in the middle. Being the one giving the uncomfy information. Mm -hmm. Truly. Truly, truly uh, one of life's joys. Well, thank you. to everybody who tuned in and we will see you next week same time same place different system bye bye